I feel like I got nothing better to do than to be to be making these lives and be on social media and be making little paintings and, and whatnot. All right, let's get this let's get this show on the road. What's happening, Chris? What's happening, Chris? All right, I'm gonna get this show on the road. For those of you who who are like, oh my God, Jose Trujillo, you are the world's greatest living artist, dude. Guys, I am. I've been telling people that, but people don't believe me, man. Look at that. Ooh la la. Alright, let's do a little painting. Just for kicks, you guys. Just for kicks. Okay, there's not nothing. Let's just do a little painting. Don't don't tell anyone that we're doing a little painting. I don't want people obsessing over my powers. Get all kinds of people obsessing over my my mucho power. Or my Mexican my Mexican powers. Feeling the power of the allergies. That's what I'm feeling. Look at that. Oh la la. Oh la la and stuff. Dude, this is going to be fun. I promise you guys. Ooh la la. I'm gonna wave at you. Consider yourself waved by the world's greatest living artist. Give me some of my love. Look at that. There's no love like 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 Mexican love. Yeah. <laughs> so very simple. See? Nothing complicated about this, this painting. As a matter of fact, if it's complicated, you're probably doing it wrong. Sim simplicity. Who said that? Simplicity is the, the highest form of sophistication. It was it was it was Da Vinci, dude. It was Da Vinci who said that. I think he knew a thing or two about sophistication. Simplicity. It's a, just much much elegance and simplicity.
Look at that. Consider yourself waved at by the world's greatest leading artist. When I when I wave at people, I, I give them some of my some of my powers. A little bit of my powers. You know. I can I can never run out of them. It's uh it's part of my genius qua. I don't run out of powers. You get to have some of my some of my uh, some of my good stuff. You might you might start painting a little better, or feeling like talking a little bit more, or craving some tacos from time to time. You might get some of that some of the powerful stuff. Yeah. Simple. Very simple. Yeah, you might start craving some tacos on, on a Thursday rather than on a Tuesday. You might be like, mm, man, what is that over there? All of a sudden, you get the urge for some tacos. That means you've been blessed by me. Look at that. Claudia says, how long does it take for the paint to dry? Right now, about three weeks during during this um, this time of the year. Uh, when it's a little hotter, about two weeks. Dry to the touch, right? Paintings don't, don't, don't really dry. Paintings cure. And so the curing process of a painting could take up to six, eight months, depending on how much, how much, um, paint you've used, how much impasto, how much thickness. But yeah, about, about three weeks at most to the touch. And then it's good to go. I love how much paint you use. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of fun using a lot of paint. Um, it also keeps me moving, right? If I use very little paint, I feel like I get stuck in areas. I have to be careful not to use too, too much because then then uh, I, I can lose... I can lose um, some of the form. 
So I gotta be careful there. There's a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot and, and I just, I look for that sweet spot. For me, right, I, I'm not saying that there's a sweet spot for everyone. But for me, there's a sweet spot. And I just kind of look for it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Watercolor, yeah, water. I think, yeah, all, 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 all mediums, right? Have a depending on where you're, what you're doing, they have a bit of a sweet spot there. flowers let's put a little bit of highlight in there just a little bit not too much I don't want to go so so bananas who knows maybe it needs a lot I don't know I don't want to judge it That. Yeah, that's for sure. What's happening, Rudy?
we go. Come bien, muchacho, no toda la vida es trabajar. <ríe> no, si como re bien. Si lo que quieren no comer tanto. There you go, look at that. Beautiful. Let me show you what it looks like from the front. Let me give you a front view of that. Yeah, let's do uno más. Let's do one more. Look at those flowers. Dude, Monet got shit on me today, man. Nor Van Gogh. Not today. Not today, Van Gogh. Not today. All right, I'm going to paint something else just because I feel like it. I don't know. I'm just to kind of shoot the shit, you know? Kill some time. I gotta go in. I gotta go in about an hour and, and uh, to a watercolor guild again. Do some of my do some of my stuff. Probably good for me to to step away from the from the studio. I've been stepping away from the studio quite a bit lately. I think it's good. Like I get I get bored of being in the studio all day. Well, I think it's good. From time to time, I get bored. You know, not all the time, but it does happen. It does happen for me from time to time. Time after time. Here. Look at that. Ooh la la. Can't always go away like this, right? Well, there's, there's such stuff that are required, that are that, that is needed as an artist. This is one of the reasons I tell artists that are like, oh my God, I got to work and work and work. I'm like, yes and no, right? Depending on, on where you're at. Depending on where you're at. The, the career requires different necessities. You can't bury your head in, in just one of the necessities. Like one of the things that I, I've noticed is either either artists tar mar market a lot, or they or they or they paint a lot, and they they do one thing a lot more than the other, and and, and that's okay because that's needed. But uh, but but sometimes they they neglect doing other things that are important. You know, if you're if you're working all day painting, you can't market. If you're marketing all day, well, that's not gonna work if you don't have any product to show for. And so I think it's a I think it's a bit of a dance. I think so. I don't know. Who am I, right? Who am I to know? Who knows? People do things their own way, and then somehow it works at the end for them. It works for everybody at the end somehow. He 
bird or horse. No, I'm making some flowers, but but <laughs> but I appreciate that. <laughs> it could be. It's a plane. It's a horse. It's a bird. It's some flowers. Look at that. I just kind of paint away, you know? Nothing, nothing is going to come out of it unless you, you squeeze some paint in there. My sister invited me for a for a soup. So so in uh, in Mexico, there's a lot of soups, right? They're part of the not well, not just in Mexico, but part of the part of the the the, the gastronomy of Mexico is soups for some reason. A big a big part of it is soups. I grew up with soups. There's all kinds of different soups. And my mouth is watering as I'm thinking about them. Um, Kind of reminds you of, was it Padla's uh, Law? They might, I think I think that's the one, right? You salivate. Um, anyways, yeah, there's all kinds of food and, and all kinds of soups in Mexico. And so my sister invited me. She's like, she's like, I'm going to make soup. And they make different soups. Like, like one of them is called cocido. So that's what, she, that's what she's making. Cocido, and then, um, you know, where I'm from, there's a famous soup called birria, uh, where I'm originally from. And then there's, there's, there's pozole, there's menudo, there's, uh, oh my God, albondigas, uh, carne en su jugo, acelgas. I'm getting hungry thinking about all of this. Sopa de hongos. Oh my God, I'm getting hungry. When I was a kid, my teacher would say, don't stain the canvas, Chris, paint it. <laughs> don't stain it. <laughs> I like that. So I would do something when I was a kid too. But I, I wasn't so, so young. I was, I was more like a teenager. I would close my eyes and paint. And my teacher caught me once. And he said, you, you can't do that. No one can paint with their eyes closed, and even if you could, why, why would you want to? You got you got eyes, but I think I would close my eyes and paint because I wanted to feel the paint. I wanted to feel the paint, uh, the brush and the paint, and the, I wanted to get in tune with with that dimension. With the, the, I want to feel it right. Sometimes when you're looking, you may be thinking, and so if you, if you if you close your eyes, you're able to awaken another another one of your senses a, a bit more like the sense of taste or touch or you know so in, in this case i wanted to awaken the sense of my sense of of touch those soups sound amazing they are they're super amazing um and it's not like it's not like the same you know it's it's not like the same just like like chicken broth and like the same. No, it, it, they, they all have their own thing. They all have their own thing. I'm a fan of soups. Some of my favorite soups are the like like fos, like like Thai and Vietnamese. But um, but um, um, I don't find I don't find uh, mo most of the fos that I've had. I don't find them very very different. Um, 
this is not to say that they're not good. They're some of my some of my favorite stuff is is uh, those soups, but uh, the Me Mexican soups you, you can have something completely different, like like not just not just different in the sense of like okay, well now we're gonna put seafood. Now we're no the the the, the composition of the plate is completely different. It's a whole different thing. I mean, gastronomy is the thing in Mexico. It's it's really one of our one of our uh, main things. Some of the food is just ridiculously good. And so I just got invited. My sister's like, you better, you better come by on Sunday. She knows I work on Sundays. And so I was like, I'm going to make an exception this Sunday to go get some soup. Look at that. Oh la la. I ate a soup called Caldo Loco, clear my sinuses. <laughs> Man, yeah, that will do it. Use a lot of paint. I sure do. I sure do use a lot of paint. Lots of paint. I use it, I use it, I use it by the pound. Look, look how much. That's what makes it super thick and and yummy. I mean, I mean, really, I, I wish I didn't use a lot. Of, I wish I didn't have to, honestly, because paint is so damn expensive. I, those of you who don't know, I, I, I pay about. I don't know about not I know I do know I was just thinking about how much I pay and I got a little sad but about six figures a year of, of paint <laughs> I do I think I single single handle handedly have kept a, a, a small business open here in Tucson <laughs> single handedly <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's <laughs> blow art supply here. Do you just make it up as you go or do you use reference? Uh, most of the time I just make it up as I go. Sometimes I use references, but, but I really don't don't find much need for them. Unless it's something very specific, you know, like a painting. Uh, I don't know, a portrait or something very specific. A, a specific place or a specific um, theme. But for the most part, I just kind of paint as I go. I already have a, a very good idea about composition and that type of deal. It, come, it kind of comes natural, right? As if you practice it so much, you, you have a pretty good idea about about um, what works for the eye. Sometimes it's not even just composition. It's just, I guess it would be composition, but it's more like it would be more about. Uh, orchestrating I know it sounds I know I, I didn't want to make it sound more more than it is but but it is it is it is a bit of orchestration where when we usually when we think about composition we're thinking about things such as I don't know where the mass is going to go the main mass or the focal point right whether we're using a rule of thirds or uh, a pyramid composition or a steel yard or whatever we're usually think that's like the basic that's like basic composition if, if if you don't know that 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 would be a good place to start learning about composition the basic stuff but then then you you start getting local like me and you start doing other things that please the eye at least my eye right um and that just you, you get a little bit more poetic with it so for example uh, this this stems right here right are, are holding those flowers but what's holding this flower is it connected to this one or what what is it i didn't feel the need to put a stem right here and so you start doing certain things uh, same thing with color not just with form or line but you're also doing it with color there's a multitude of things happening as i'm painting um that i am um, you know if i wanted to get very very by the book, almost cl classic. Uh, all I would have to do is just kind of figure out a way, usually through color and this, and do something like that. You know, create that my focal point. Um, but don't don't have to, right? Don't have to because it messes up other things. If, if I so I I play it by ear. Because it messes up other things of mine that I'm working on, and and so I try to refrain my like, restrain not refrain restrain myself from from doing certain things that I know that are that are the typical or the classic things to do in a painting. Um, in order to I lose somewhere to gain somewhere else, right? I'll lose I'll lose uh, ground in a place and then gain, gain altitude somewhere else. It happens the same way with um, um, the amount of paint that I use or the amount of brushing that I do. Um, sometimes it's not even about the form, it's about the feel of, of um, how unified it becomes with the excessive amount of brushing. Yeah. And it's just little games that I play around with, you know. They're not necessarily. You're very accurate with your strokes. Oh, thank you. You just make. Okay, I read that one. Yeah. Well, the part of the accuracy also is because uh, I, I I'm doing. I'm doing multiple paintings in a day, right? So, so there's certain things that I have to. But I have to do again, right? I'll, I'll lose somewhere else, but I'll gain. I'll gain in another place. I feel like that's life, right? You, you, you what do they say? You, you gain something, you lose something. You can't really have it all all the time. Um, it, it's a funny thing. I, I always joke around with this uh, in my own mind, sometimes with other people. But you know, if you want, 
if you want something, you're gonna have to let go of something else. Right? If you want a, if you want a, a, a serious relationship with a person, a partner, uh, you're gonna have to let go of your, of your, uh, your luxuries, your own own time, right? Your own own time. If you want more money, you're gonna have to let go of time, and you're constantly, you know. Picking somewhere and letting go somewhere else. Picking somewhere, it's, it's 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 a funny thing. And the more the more I live, the more I realize that it's just picking and letting go, picking up and, and dropping. Have you ever painted blindfolded? Not blindfolded, but with my eyes closed. I I've, I've done um, express expressive work like that. Expressive work is is very it's very liberating. very liberating especially if, if you're not trying to get anything out of it if you just you know you just kind of let it be uh, it's, it's very very liberating let's do another one let me paint another one my friends uno mas Ooh, no mas expressive work is one of those things that it's like it's very liberating. It just is. So, also my, my my approach is a bit different than than maybe other artists, depending on what they're doing. I I have more of a cold call approach. A bird or a bunny. Uh, I wasn't planning on, but let's do it because because you've 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 asked a couple of times and let's make it happen. Um, my approach is different. It's more like a cold calling type of approach, the cold calling of painting. Um, because and I call it that jokingly because uh, the the reason why is because I I'll. Uh, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Um, back in 15 camp. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll work on it the same way a cold caller would work. I, 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 or a salesperson, right? An experienced, not, not just any salesperson, but an experienced salesperson would do it. Um, if, if you can't sell, you can't sell no matter how many how many phone calls you make. You're gonna miss the opportunity of the leads, right? But if but if you can sell, then you know it's just a matter of how many phone calls you make, if that makes any sense. I hope that makes sense. And that's 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 sort of how I I approach this game. You know, it's it's sort of my more or less my approach. I'll repeat that again for the people in the back. If you cannot sell, you know, AKA paint, it doesn't matter how many paintings you make. It's going to be hard. But if you, but if you can sell AKA paint, you know, it's just a matter of how many, how much hours or how many, how many pieces you put out there. Either hours or pieces, right? You know, it's just a matter of time. Um, and, and that's my approach. What was the craziest thing someone asked you to paint? Don't lie. <laughs> uh, usually something sexual. It's not crazy, but I... I, I you know, usually something sexual or, or uh, or uh, or um, someone who wants me to paint them nude, but they want to come to the studio and that type of stuff. And I'm like, dude, no, I <laughs> I can't do that. I got my family in my studio, and <laughs> it'll be really weird. You 
Um, so I've had that asked quite a bit. Surprisingly, quite a bit. But that's the cra it's not it's not the it's not the crazy thing to paint. Somebody asked me to paint some a, a very weird dream, but I'm like I'm not an illustrator. I'm a, I'm a painter. And I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna go paint your dreams. Um, but um, it's not so much that it's weird. It's it's the the, the positioning of it, right? Like I, I can't do I can't do stuff like that. It's not. It's not my, my you know, my, when I was younger, I used to do things like that. I have uh, yeah. nude models or whatever at my studio, but that's, I can't, I don't, I don't live like that anymore. It was super weird. Look at that. What is it, dude? No, I uh, I got yard work to do. Full. There's there gonna be a little bird right there. But that's about it. Nothing, nothing, nothing too crazy. Nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that that is not crazy. I don't consider it crazy. I just, you know, it's it's just, it's just not how I how I have my studio set up. Do you do seasonal stuff like Halloween? No, I, I try not to, you know. Honestly, honestly, I know that it, I know that it works and people do it and, it and it works and it creates attention and maybe they sell a little bit more. It, it, all those things distract me, to be honest. They, they, they just, they do distract me. Because now I'm thinking about, about, now I'm not just working, I'm thinking about something. You know? And so it's no longer about work, it's about it's about putting a thinking hat on. I know. And and most people will be like, well, they, what, what's there to think? But 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 it is because I have something already that works. I know. And so adding those layers of complexity, uh, I've done it before. It's not like I haven't. Adding those layers of complexity uh, kind of mess with yeah. my mojo. Yes, absolutely. Like when that mess with my mojo, and and I feel like. Um, well, you don't. Like I'm, I'm not the guy for that, you know. Just like I'm not the guy that that'll uh, that'll paint your dreams, you know. I, I don't do illustration. My 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 painting is another thing that I don't like doing is when when somebody if I sell a painting and then people are like, oh, can you paint this painting? Kind of like repeat it uh, for many reasons, about all kinds of reasons. I. I don't even have the energy to go into. But the main one is that they never like it. And so it's, it's always effort thrown away. It, it, always, not sometimes, always. But uh, sometimes I do because I, cause I, I, uh, I imagine that it's going to be different. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, kind of like that, that, that dating thing that people are like, it's going to be different this time. And then it ends up being the same way. <laughs> And so, like, if you see this painting and then someone else buys it, and then you're like, "Oh man, I missed out on that painting. Can you can you make one like that for me?" I'm like, "Dude, fuck no. Like, fuck no. No, because you want that one. You want that one. By the time I by the time I do the other one, you are not gonna be convinced. I know that it's happened to me." 
so many times. And then I'm just the mom, right? Like, like no. When you need to find no, you want that one. And if you missed out on it, well, you missed out on it. Because uh, it's uh, those those pain things bring me headaches. Or they just bother me. Right? Those pain things just bother me because I, I I know what the outcome is all the time. And so I, I try to stay away from that. I try to stay away from anything that's that's outside of my talent. If it's outside my talent, I ain't doing it. One hundred and one ways to cringe an artist. <laughs> yeah, how's it going, Lori? Oh man, there's so many ways. There's so many ways. By the way, Lori, uh, your painting—I just remember right now your painting is. Um, is 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 going out i i i apologize it took a, a bit more to to get it out we we're waiting on a frame and and i didn't mention to you i'm so glad that you're here that way i can i can catch it and let you know it's going out it's boxed and everything um it should have gone out should have gone out about two days ago but we we're waiting on that frame um, thank you for that Um, yeah, it's happening out in Vail in our area. Super simple. So yeah, there's there's a few things that I don't do. Um, well, I'd already got banned in my state. Our governor put a whole ban. Yeah. But you know, it's it's it just depends on the artist, right? Like some some of the stuff that I don't do is. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't entertain low, like low, low balls, right? Low ball offers. I don't enter, I don't entertain any low ball offers. Like if a painting is, I don't know, a thousand dollars and somebody wants to give me two hundred dollars for it, you know, I, I wouldn't even get back to you. Not because I get offended, because I just I don't have the time. I, I don't get it. I don't get offended. Like, I know that's the nature of business, you know, um, offers and whatnot. But I, I won't even get back. It's not even worth the the effort of getting back, writing someone back. I just delete the, the messages. I'm like, as I see them, I'm like, delete, 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 delete. delete. <laughs> The bird is beautiful. Well, thank you. Your painting is uh, so good. You could uh, leave it. Unfortunately, they still look amazing. I know. No, I I hear you. I think I think um, someone else someone else was here also mentioned that. Uh, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, I can't find his name. Um, M. Schmaltz. M. Schmaltz. There you go. I found it. Uh, he did mention, you know, the painting is done, and, and then you keep working on it, and you kind of ruin it. Uh, it what, what ends up happening is that is that I already know what what makes it sellable, right? What makes a painting uh, something that people actually want to buy. I, I I have it gauged. I don't know everything, but I have I have this pretty pretty dialed in. Um, and so that's why I joke around and I'm like, I know when, because I, I've tried everything under the, well, not everything, but, but lots of stuff, including that one. Uh, stopping paintings where I feel like, okay, this is good enough. Uh, leaving a canvas exposed or, you know, things that you're like, man, that's a great painting, leave it alone. Uh, it'll surprise you how much people will reject it. Uh, usually artists love it. But 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 other people that are not artists or that are or that aren't artists that are just starting out, 
will reject it. And those 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 are usually the buyers, right? Usually the buyers are, are not, usually, not always, but are, are not, don't have an eye for art. Um, and, and, and what ends up happening is that they, they want you to paint the sides. They want you to do all this, all this thing that it has nothing to do with the artwork. All these extra things that have nothing to do with the artwork. What's happening, Ken? And 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 that creates a. It's unfortunate, uh, I think, because then the artist cannot really focus on art. I mean, I can and I can say no to those people, but those those are those those people are usually the are usually the the ones paying. The ones that have a very sophisticated eye. Uh, are usually not paying or are uh, or can can paint it themselves <laughs> or can paint it themselves um, and so this is not to say that people that that buy work don't have sophisticated eyes of course they do um, but but the vast majority of people that buy work um, are not looking at it artistically like that they're not looking at like they're not looking at it like that they're no, they're looking at it more like a, like at the core, you know. How would this look on my wall? Type of deal. They're, they're thinking more about it from that point, from that perspective. And it doesn't matter the price point. I've heard Damien Hurst talk about that. He, he that's one of his pet peeves as an artist too. This is our first world problems, guys. This doesn't mean anything. But uh, Damien Hurst was talking about that. That uh, usually his buyers are. Uh, are artists or people who, who want to become artists and and sometimes he doesn't feel like he has all the artistic freedom because because he knows what they want and, and so he gives it to them yeah. you know he knows what they want what size is this bird this is uh 12 by no it's an 11 by 14 11 by 14 what colors are on your palette? Uh, I'll show you right now. Uh, Ken says, man, I watched live on Sotheby's London. Page a Banksy artwork go for a record 18 million pounds at auction. On auction, yeah. <laughs> but th those dudes over there are, are, are they, they, have a, they have a little business going on. Yeah, those dudes have a little business going on with that. Let me, let me show you my palette. I, I can't even wrap my brain around what they're doing over there. So I got soft mixing white. Hey, Dan. Dan. Make sure to open the door for Marcel. Soft mixing white. Phthalo blue. Radian. I got Walmart oil right there. Cad yellow pale hue. Cad red. This is a deep hue. Uh, dioxazine purple. Magenta and lamp black. Yeah. And these are the colors that I mix that, that little painting with. Boom. No, I, I mean, yeah, I can't even wrap my brain around what the hell they're doing over there uh, on uh, Sotheby's and Christie's. And, and they're, they're all fucking bananas out there, man. I, I wish I was part of that crew, though. But I, I haven't been able to to get my, my, my feet wet there. Uh, I don't think they want me yet. <laughs> and I say yet, just so that I can keep part of the a lot of the law of attraction working on my <laughs> on my behalf. Um, they're 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 doing fun stuff with with their money. You know? Of course they are. Of course they are. Uh, it's a uh, high end high end high end art is a market of its own. You know, it's its own market. It's it's almost ridiculous for any artist to think that that, that they can they can be part of that. Um, I think you have to be part of the, the friend circle to be part of that because it's a it's a market of its own. Um, it's kind of like high end real estate. The only reason someone someone pays eighteen million dollars for a house is because they can sell it for you know twenty five million when 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 they sell it. Uh, it's like high-end real estate. It's not nothing, nothing more, nothing less than that. So if a painting is going to go for eighteen million, um, the buyer is going to hang on to it for, you know, a couple of years, and then the market is hot for Banksy again. Yeah. 
they don't hang on they don't hang on on it for too long most of them uh because they're just they're just trying to flip right they're trying to flip a few million they're gonna keep it at 18 and then if they paid 18 they're probably gonna when they sell it again they're probably gonna sell it for you know, 25 or so um that's the game there people call it money laundering i don't know if that's what it is i don't know if everybody's doing that i think what they have is they they created uh, an artificial market for themselves i think that's what they did it's an artificial market does it have a bubble i guess everything they they talk about how everything has a bubble i personally don't think so i think that when that i think what's going to happen is they're going to tap out they're going to tap out on Picasso's. Like, at some point, it's going to be like, Picasso for one billion, right? And there's only going to be a, a small group of people working on that, like buying that, the the Bezos, the Elon Musk's, and uh, I don't know, Carlos Slim's, and, and, you know, those people are going to buy it for one billion, and then, you know. But, but the, the circle is going to get... I think the reason why those bubbles happen is because the circle gets smaller. I don't know. I'm not an economist. But these are my, this is my best guess. Uh, my, my best guesstimation is that the circle of power gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So I don't think it's going to pop. I think what's going to happen is as the circle is getting smaller, they're going to jump onto another artist and start again. Jump onto another group of artists, right, and start again. We're going to start up. Rather than trying to buy a painting for $200 million and and make $50 million next time they sell it, rather than doing that, they're going to go and, and buy 10... Ten million dollar paintings or ten thirty million dollar paintings somewhere else, and then and then start again, making that circle smaller. That's the whole point of of of, um, of the game, right? We're looking for a new ocean, looking for a for a, for a blue ocean. Uh, They sit in some rich guy's warehouse. Yeah, <laughs> we've talked about it. <laughs> They're in the port in uh, in, in, in Switzerland. Um, they're all sitting there. The game is between Panama and Switzerland. I hope I don't get like assassinated for talking about this. <laughs> I think everybody knows. I think it's well documented. Uh, banker and lawyers sit around and talk about their money art artists talk about rendering money oh yeah yeah it's it's flipped right yeah the tables are flipped there claudius is fantastic so cute bird i never thought a rock bird can be that cute oh my god what are you talking about i make the cutest birds ever um it's a yeah yeah oh shit i think i have to make a phone call because i have to I have to go in a little bit um Crows are so cool. They are. They're the coolest. Thank you so much, <laughs> Ryan. Um, Ward, I love that. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, be a judge. I'm gonna go be a judge with uh, watercolor artists somewhere um, in a gallery right now. I'll show you guys. I'll make a live and I'll show you guys where I'm at. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I didn't even shower. But I, I mean, I showered this morning, but I haven't, I'm going to go like this because I'm cool. Cool artists can, can, you know, can be dirty and smelly. I can be a little stinky. I hope I'm not too stinky because, you know, I'm hitting that age, man. You know, I'm getting older, dude. I can't, I can't be so stinky. I got to, I got to show my, my wife was making fun of me the other day because she's like, I can't believe you told him you're stinky. Dude, I get stinky from time to time. I got to, got to shower. Dude. <laughs> I've been telling everybody, man. I'm, I'm, I'm getting at that point. I need to, I need to, I need to shower. I need to shower more often. Twice a day, twice a day, twice a day is what I'm looking forward to. Um, no, <laughs> I'm such a butt, huh? <laughs> lowly, <laughs> lowly. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I, I, right now where I'm at. Uh, cologne, perfume, cologne. It just it it it's, it doesn't do all the deal, you know. It just doesn't. It, it, I, I, I need another shower. Uh, what is it? Walking, shaking your head like, nope, not good art here. <laughs> I need our showers. Man, 
I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the guys here, but but it's true. We need the showers, guys. We need our showers. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, talk to you guys. I'll I'll record that and and I'll show you. I need a shave and a haircut. That's really what I need more than anything. Look at that. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Stay well and sophisticated, everyone.